Hey Pokemon fans, Tamashi here, and today I'm going to be reviewing a little known relic of Pokemon history, the Pokemon Battle Stadium, sent in by Zack. Thanks Zack! So what exactly is this thing? Well, when it was released in 1999, Hasbro was sure it would be the next hot seller. The Pokemon ThinkChip Battle Stadium was a computerized playset that allowed kids to play out extremely simplified Pokemon battles with special figures. Each figure had a built-in microchip that saved its typing and HP, which the stadium could read to tell which Pokemon was out on the field and calculate damage. At the time, this was an extremely advanced toy, and kids were eager to get their hands on it. So why does no one remember it? Let's take a look at how it plays and find out. To start a match, all you had to do was hit the start button on the side of the stadium. Then an obnoxiously loud voice would say, Welcome to Pokemon Stadium! Lights would flash on the board in a clockwise pattern and slow down gradually. Cause every side of the stadium they stopped on would get to go first. Then and only then could the players pick their Pokemon and put them on the field when the game told them to. After declaring each Pokemon's hit points, the game would yell, at the player that would go first, and the battle would begin. When the voice prompts you to attack, you simply pick whether you want to do a normal attack or a special attack. Normal attacks have no typing and always do neutral damage. Special attacks rely on the Pokemon in place typing, and do damage based on whether or not that typing is strong or weak against the opposing Pokemon. Every Pokemon, regardless of what typing they have in the actual Game Boy game, just gets a single typing here. Bulbasaur is grass only instead of grass poison, and Geodude is rock only instead of rock ground. Once you pick what kind of attack you want to use, the lights flash in the center of the board. The idea here is to stop the light as close to the center of the board as possible using the center button, to make your attack as powerful as possible. Once your attack lands, the game calculates damage and declares the remaining hit points. Hit points remaining! Five, eight, two, <laughs> then your turn is over, and your opponent does the same. If you have a Pokemon that could evolve into another figure you happen to own, you could evolve it during your turn as well, which would refill its hit points to the new maximum and give you a huge advantage. Whoa! It's evolving! <laughs> <laughs> Additionally, you could switch out your Pokemon during your turn, which you can do up to two times during a match. Unfortunately though, this does not recite your remaining HP. Otherwise though, battles are just louder, rinse, repeat until one player runs out of HP and a winner is declared. Hit points remaining! Zero! The winner is... <laughs> Each figure came with a little card stating its minimum and maximum possible hit points as well as its elemental typing. You see, in addition to just being used in battle, these figures could be trained to increase their maximum hit points by winning battles, or with various peripherals. For example, this Think Chip Ash figure. You just shove this little half Pokeball up your Pokemon's butt, and Ash will get right to training against an imaginary opponent. which type of Pokemon you battle, but what the actual species is, is never specified. Should we battle a poison Pokemon trainer? In fact, whatever the hell I was battling evolved four times during the battle. What the heck? Look out! They're evolving! <laughs> this figure is freaking enormous, by the way. Much taller than the stadium. I guess they wanted him to be in scale to the figures, but that's still off because the fully evolved Pokemon are still itty bitty. Why is Ash so big? He could squash Squirtle under his giant feet. What's kind of stupid is the figures that came bundled with the system were always Squirtle and Geodude, which meant one player would always have an advantage over the other unless you bought more figures. And even if you bought more, the type advantage made such a huge difference in this game that you both had to choose Pokemon of the same type for it to be a fair fight. Who would win was based only on which Pokemon you chose, and whether or not you own its evolution. The battle itself was just going through the motions. You might as well cut to the chase and declare a winner without actually bothering to play. I'd say the biggest problem with this system is just that the gameplay is extremely boring. Aside from the overly loud and Noxious voice yelling at you the entire game that you cannot turn off or even lower the volume. It takes all the fun out of playing with Pokemon toys. The game is too rigid to allow kids to really play with the figures during the battle, and at the same time it's not complex enough to give them any sort of challenge or require any thought. Some of the figures have movable appendages, but if you pick a Pokemon up off the board, the game yells at you to put it back until you do. We played Pokemon! Honestly, when I had this as a kid, I took the batteries out and just used it as a regular playset more than I ever tried to play the game the way it was intended. Couple that with its sheer size, it was difficult to store, and it ended up being one of the very few Pokemon items from my childhood I no longer have. Add a whopping $40 price tag to the stadium set, with an additional $8 per Pokemon and another $30 for the Ash figure. This set was a lot more expensive than your average Pokemon toy. It's no wonder parents weren't interested in getting this for their kids. What's amazing though, even though the Think Chip line was never a huge hit, 
They're still making toys for it, even to this day. In 2001, they released a Johto version of the Battle Stadium, as well as a couple lines of Johto figures, and a re-release of the Ash Trainer figure. In 2006, the line was revived again with the ThinkChip Battle Trainer figures, which came with a miniature LCD screen stadium, and weren't compatible with the previous lines of figures, and included figures of Helen Pokemon to play with. I can't say how well these sold, but given that some of these sets run for around $80 online, and the fact that I was unaware they even existed until I researched for this review, I'm going to guess that the 2006 Battle Trainer figures weren't exactly flying off the shelves. The Think Chip Pokemon Battle Stadium was an interesting toy for its time, but it really failed to deliver on the fun. Still, the system and its figures make for some pretty sought-after collector's items these days, running for some pretty steep prices online. There are even four super rare limited edition figures, Entei, Venusaur, Heracross, and Sneasel, some of which are so rare I couldn't even find photos of them. So all in all, while the Think Chip Pokemon Battle Stadium might not be the most fun to play, it makes for a unique addition to any Pokemon collection. Thanks to Zach for sending this in, and thank you for watching. I'm Tamashi, Instagram for more Pokemon videos. See ya!